Hey guys, Shalana here. Welcome to The Bin Zone. On today's video, we're talking about C season two, especially that ending because there's so much things we have to talk about. First of all, Kofun is a baby daddy to his aunt, the queen. Wow. Paris. <sighs> Paris. And most importantly, where did Baba Voss go? All these are different plot lines that ended at the end of season two that we have to discuss. But before we even get into that, why is it Gerald Morel's side of the family is always doing some crazy fuck shit? Last season it was Gerald Morel selling his daughter off to Trevantes. This season it's his son creating a bomb in a world full of blind people. But the crux of all of this, even as epic as this season was with Batista as Ido Voss versus Baba Voss, even that climax, the true villain of this series has always remained one person, Queen Kane. She is the driving force behind this entire season. But let's dive into this finale. In this finale, Queen Kane got Trevantes and Paya to go to war with each other. And she was deposed, making Margaret the new queen of the land. But it ain't come without cost because that put Baba Voss and his brother Ido Voss at odds. And I have to say, and I have to say that dynamic between the two characters, while it comes off harsh and strong, it's a very touching storyline because ultimately Baba Voss did not want to fight his brother. Baba Voss actually ran away from Trevantes in order to spare Ido's life, but Ido doesn't see it that way. When it comes to Ido, his sole focus has been that he has been abandoned by his brother. His brother left him behind, betrayed the cause, but Ido doesn't understand that his father tasked Baba to kill his brother and Baba couldn't do it. But because your brother abandoned you, Ido has gained all that resentment and no matter what's happened, he can't let it go. Even after Baba Voss defeated him and Baba Voss whooped him, he couldn't let it go. Like he had to die because at this point his life, his one sole purpose was to kill his brother and avenge his father and that cost him everything to the point where he lost his own life in order for this to happen. But all that was accelerated by the mastermind behind everything. Queen Kane. If we remember last season, the bulk of last season was Queen Kane looking for Gerald Morel and his kids because she wants to be the one to bring sight back. She wants to be deified and it even is exacerbated in this season because she seduces Kofun to impregnate her and it's like this is real Game of Thronesian in the sense, right? She's his aunt and also his baby mama and it's all sorts of weird incest but at the same time, remember, monarchies for the most part throughout history have always practiced some form of incest in order to keep their bloodline pure, in her case, to give her bloodline sight. And this could cement her as a future ruler in this world because she's giving birth to a sighted prince who's going to lead the world into sight. And all that is cool. But remember last season, the witch finders wasn't really fucking with the sighted and their whole purpose was to hunt them down and kill them. I want to take a second here and talk about Kofun. Because Kofun was my favorite character last season. But this season, this guy was relegated to being manipulated by the queen to the point where it's like, bro, what are you doing, Kofun? He got manipulated, he's blindsided, and it's like his character regressed because he was always the more rational and reasonable one between him and Hanwa. But as the season progressed, you saw that regression and Kofun was the one that was most likely to be brainwashed by the queen because he stands for nothing. Hanwa on the other side has always been on the side of sight. Even last season when she saw the gift of sight and speaking of her and the gift of sight, she has a girlfriend. Hanwa and Ren is probably one of the best parts of this season because it shows us a different side of Hanwa and it shows us that it's not just Jola Morel's bloodline who are sighted. There are plenty of other, maybe not plenty, but there are other sighted people throughout this world and Sight is slowly but surely coming back and Hanwa's thing is we're decided we should usher in this new world which puts her in direct opposition to Kofun because in Kofun's world view it's like they were persecuted their entire life for being sighted and it's always been a blight to them. Sight has been a detriment. Kofun can't fight because of his sight and it's when he starts to train with Toe that he starts to realize that maybe sight isn't as big an advantage as it is. But it is Kofun. Sight is the greatest advantage you can have but he wouldn't understand that. So all this comes into culmination of essentially an arms race for sight. Because even though Ido is fixated on taking down Baba Voss, Ido also understands the advantage of sight. That's why he's buying sighted children from Jarla Morel. Because he sees the advantages of using sight in his army and it goes into full effect. 
when he has that little kid in that final battle directing the blind where to shoot their arrows and also where to hunt Baba Voss earlier in the season, it shows the advantages of having sighted scouts in a world full of blind people. So whoever can actually harness the power of sight are the ones that's going to dominate the world. Whether it's Trevantes, Paya, whoever has sight first is a super advantage against the rest of the world. And that couldn't be more evident at the end when Ottoman, when he introduces bombs and TNT into this world, remember, 99% of the world is blind. So when they get blown the fuck up, they'll have no idea where it's coming from. It's going to be almost as though it was God striking them down. And when it comes to God striking them down, of course that makes perfect sense because in this world, the God flame is the sun and they can feel heat, but they can't really see where anything's coming from. If they get shot by an arrow for the most part, they don't know what happened to that person, how that person died. So a bomb being introduced here, this arm race is really heating up. But even though it sets up traction for the next season, even though so much things go on, and even though that Kofun and Hanu are at odds, Kofun's fucking his aunt, Anu has a girlfriend on the other side, even though all that's happening, at the core of the story is always the characters, and the characters transform the most. And I want to take this moment to talk about Paris. Paris is one of the characters that's been with us since the first episode, and she's always been a pillar. And it shows the extent and the despicableness of Queen Kane that she would kill Paris, when Paris was the only one who actually gave a fuck about her, and Paris was the only one who was willing to help her in her delivery of her child, and it's like she killed Paris out of impulse. Queen Kane is the most impulsive character in the show, and this finale goes to show she killed Boots because she was unhappy. She killed Paris. Damn, Paris was the heart of the team. Notice when as soon as Paris died, right? Everyone kind of went their separate ways. You have Margaret having to you have Margaret having to lead a whole kingdom by herself. And even Tamakti Jun was willing to step away from that. Hanwa and Kofun, both of them at our odds because of their ideals. And then Baba Voss walks away from it all because Baba Voss did not sign up for any of this. And arguably the person who suffered the most this season was Baba Voss. He was tortured at the start of the season. He had to relive his family traumas. He had to kill his brother on top of killing his father. His two kids are beefing and the one person who's always been by his side, his ride or die, Paris was killed. Oh man. Baba Voss had enough. He's gone. And Baba Voss walks away and goes into the forest presumably to be with the hidden tribes because as we saw at the finale, while Magra is the new queen and Queen Kane is going to try to get her thrown back, of course, the hidden tribes, which composed of the majority of the people of Paya, sat with Baba Voss. He was the reason they won this war. So in a sense, Baba Voss is going to be with his people and arguably forming the strongest army in this season because at the end of the season, there are many different factions going on. Magra's army is split into two, the witch finders who were loyal to the credences of the blind or witches and the witch finders behind Tamakti June are two different factions that are definitely going to start beefing. Then you have Trevantes and Ren will be back because Ido Voss is dead and he was their general. And the loss of Ido is a big blow to them because the Gan Knights, that's what they were called, are at their borders. And that's four armies so far. And then you have Baba Voss, who arguably is the best fighter in the show. He has his own army. And Baba Voss ultimately is the one guy who can kind of steer the ship. He's the one person that Hanwa and Kofu listen to for the most part because Baba Voss is just that dude. He's just that savage. So this season ends essentially with setting up the future plans of this world. Baba Voss going with the Hidden Tribes and Bo Lion. You have Queen Kane and Marga's internal conflict. You have Trevantes and Dora with Ganites. You have Sight coming back and you have bombs. Explosions galore is going to happen next season. This world and this season got expanded thoroughly. Like throughout this season, the world got even bigger. And with that setup, the world is about to get a lot bigger next season, a lot more brutal, a lot more violent, because the heart and soul Paris is gone. The voice of reason is gone. So there's a bunch of war hungry people left. And next season is about to go down. Baba Voss is reconnecting with nature, healing himself from all the trauma he went through. But when it comes to his kids, he'll be back. And when he finds out what Queen Kane did to Kofun, how she manipulated him, Oh, Baba Voss is coming for that ass. But anyway, guys, that's my thoughts on C Season 2. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and until next time, binge on.